The Democratic Nursing Organization of South Africa's Provincial Secretary here in Gauteng, Bongani Mazibuka, joins me now to discuss these numbers and possible solutions to help curb the spread of the virus. It's very good to have you with us. What is the situation? What are you seeing at the moment here in Gauteng? Uh, good evening, Jane, and thanks for having us. The situation is quite dire at the moment um, as we are seeing more and more patients uh, getting into the hospital. And um, that means that there's a, now a higher need for beds within the public sector. The private sector settings, we know that uh, more hospitals are almost at capacity by now. And um, there's also the challenge of shortage of nursing staff and other medical personnel. So we are at a very critical stage as it is right now to deal with the pandemic. How long can we go? on at this stage? What, what will the final impact be? That's actually very difficult to say, but the final impact would be having uh, no beds for the patients or running or having beds without people to be able to care for those particular patients. Because um, we've got a number of challenges. Everybody knows about uh, the situation with Charlotte Matlaya uh, Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been an overburden with hospitals like Rahima Musa and Helen Joseph. And of late, we know that I think Bethako as well in the East End, there's been uh, quite an influx there as well. So it's a, it's a bit difficult to say, but the way things are going, if we don't get um, some form of relief in the, in the form of either tighter restrictions and more beds with more personnel, I'm, I'm a bit worried with where we are going to. We are hearing that some patients are being flown out of the province, sent to other hospitals due to the bed shortage. Can you tell us how that is working? Well, we've heard that, but we're not unable to confirm it. What we hear is that it was probably, I think, from a, one of the private hospitals where the patient needed attention and there wasn't enough capacity. But we've also heard that from NetCare's side, they're trying to create more and more beds uh, on their side as well. Uh, with the public sector, I know that uh, the, the HOD also alluded to the fact that they're trying to create beds in the public sector. But um, that is, uh, those are all things that are in the pipelines. What we are currently seeing at the moment is people being overburdened with the current situation, more necessary having to work longer hours and other uh, healthcare personnel. And uh, with that as well, having a shortage of, a challenge of resources. So it's uh, with PPE also being spread thin. So those are some of the challenges, and we are a bit worried. We are hoping that some of those things would be attended to as and when we, the, the situation goes. Yes, but Mugani, on the other I was hand, I think ask... one of the solutions... Yeah, carry on. Yes, yes. Uh, and I was going to ask you how people are faring on the front line. I should imagine they are exhausted. They're seeing a lot of people losing their lives. H how, do they, how do they keep operating? Yeah. That's a difficult one. Um, I think uh, in the week as well, I've alluded to this, and we have mentioned it just in our side to the department to say we need to have a debriefing as a, a mandatory thing that, that should be taking place. Um, we know that they've got some form of uh, employee wellness program to assist, but I'm not sure how accessible is it and how many employees are aware of it. But we are seeing people, nurses who are on the, bed, on, on the verge of burnout because they've lost loved ones, they've lost patients, and they've also lost colleagues in the process. So it has been a very difficult time, uh, particularly for the nursing fraternity. And uh, difficult to overcome because many say that they've never seen anything like this before in their lifetime. Yeah, that's true. And um, we also take, we need to take into consideration uh, the fact that for the past uh, more than a year now, a uh, couple of months, almost 15 months or so, some of the nurses have not even been able to take leave. And um, I think even for us in the, in the union as DINOSA, we are union for nurses and we are nurses as well. None of us have been able to take leave. We've just been on this and running up and down, trying to make sure that things are on board and things are happening. So it's been a very difficult time. People, we are, I think we are all stretched very thin. We need uh, something that is going to help us to um, have some form of relief uh, from all of this at, uh, at uh, some stage. And seeing what you're seeing and hearing what the frontline staff are going through, what is your message to South Africans tonight? 
As South Africans, let us be responsible. Uh, we need to uh, practice, take those uh, non-pharmaceutical measures into consideration. And I would say that uh, the president and whoever else is in charge, they need to consider a, a bit more st- tighter restrictions. Because if you look at it, we've, re- we've been requesting this for, for the past couple of weeks now to say that let us social distance, let us sanitize and so forth, uh, keep wearing our masks. But it's not really happening. Instead, you're seeing more and more infections. And we're not seeing, we're seeing people having uh, parties and much more uh, gatherings. Like what we've seen even on Friday with the EFF having uh, that uh, march to Safra. You know, we, we can't keep having such events when we are in the middle of a pandemic and we are calling for people to be uh, more responsible. It's not possible. People need to uh, adhere to the regulations because they are there for our own safety. Rangani Mazibuko, good to talk to you and thank you to the staff for doing the incredible work that they are doing, your members.